What gives you hope? What things do you look forward to? What kind of, what in your life, when you're having a difficult time, helps you get through that difficult time? Often, our perspective has much to do with how we deal with certain situations. And an example of that is on Friday, uh, our son was playing uh, for Mayo and, and playing in the district tournament, and they were they started off uh, down four nothing. Uh, they'd come. They were starting to come back, and it was a little bit of a nail biter, and a lot of nervous energy, and 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 different things that you deal with. And I'm trying to stay calm. And if you know anything about me and sporting events, calm is not always what I'm able to maintain. Um, but I was really trying to to stay calm and and not be a distraction or, or blow up or anything. And while I was there, um, I I could barely kind of see what was on my phone because I had. Um, my sunglasses on, which are polarized, so polarized always doesn't go well with the phone. And I saw that there was a message from someone, and they sent it, and I opened it up, and uh, their son uh, is, is, is homeschooled, and he had written a little uh, article. And I read it, and I was like, perspective. What really matters in our lives? What's the most important thing? While uh, a game is something like that, especially a son like my son is very passionate about baseball. Um, and he said, since he was a little kid, I was born for this. And so you get, as a parent, you get a little like, you want your kid to succeed in anything and everything they can. And I read uh, this note and I was just like, ah, oh, perspective. Because I kind of gone through a couple weeks of, of cars breaking down and other things happen, and it just comes down to, like, perspective. And when we have eternal hope and when we believe and understand what truly matters is eternity with Christ for anyone and everyone who can be saved, it changes how we deal with everything in our lives. And here's the thing. We don't always deal with things well, but as we refocus and, and remember all that God has done for us, all that he will do for us, and when we put our trust in him, we could deal with situations and stress in a different way. We don't have to take it upon ourselves. We can say, I'm going to trust in the Lord that things are going to go and work out. Well, the, the boys battled back and ended up winning uh, the first game by, by two runs and then winning the final game, which was uh, quite a tight game until the last couple innings as well, and they ended up winning that by 10 and, and becoming district champions. And that was great. And then I saw the emails about AJ, that he had had a heart attack and had three stints put in, and I was just like perspective. Uh, AJ is the chairman of our board, someone I'm, I'm very close with. Have, uh, I have great trust in him, and, and I know that he, he cares for me, and he's there for me. And I was like, wow. I called and talked to him, and it was great to talk to him and, and, and know that he was hoping to go home on Saturday. He, he, he did make it home, and he's on the mend, and he's so thankful for the prayers that were lifted up. But perspective in our lives, what matters most? When we're about to lose a business or a business is failing, what perspective do we have? When a relationship has come undone and there seems to be nothing that we could do to mend it or to fix it, what is our perspective? When we get the news from the doctor that we're coming in close on our expiration date, how do we deal with that? What is our perspective? When we're dealing with loved ones who are walking that path to the end of their lives, what is our perspective? When we have a loved one who has a chronic illness or, or has, been, uh, has a disability or has a health issue that is not going to go away, what is our perspective? How do we deal with it? Are we able to have hope and security because of our eternal, our eternal hope, our perspective as Christians? What does it look like? 
2 Corinthians 4, 13 through 5, 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his, with us with, and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day for this a slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measures. The Christian perspective. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earth, <clears throat> earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made, with hands eternal in the heavens." This is the Christian perspective. We have an eternal decision to make. You ever think about that? All your, our decisions in life are eternal decisions. Will we make the decision from our eternal security and belief or the temporal temporary? As the faithful, we believe we have eternal life in Christ Jesus to be lived in heaven. And we believe it starts with us bringing this eternal hope in heaven to earth. Our eternity starts now. You ever think about that? Eternity starts now. It does not start at death. But our eternity starts in that moment of belief in Jesus Christ, our faith, our belief, our hope, in our salvation, our eternal in Jesus Christ. Do you have eternal hope? You see, eternal hope conquers all things, for it is truly hope in Christ Jesus. Our hope in Christ is chosen and in place no matter the struggle we go through. As long as we believe and know Christ is our only hope, then we will have eternal hope, salvation, and grace forever. I think what happens sometimes is we replace our hope in Christ with our hope that we could be good enough for Christ or our, our belief that we could be religious enough for Christ. But we must always remember our hope is in Christ and what he has done for us, what he will do for us, and what he will do through us when our hope and faith is in him and what he has done for us alone. We cannot earn it. We cannot get anyone else to earn it. We cannot get enough stars for memorizing enough verses or saying enough prayers. But our hope is in Christ, in Christ alone. Our hope is not in our physical ability to avoid our, all the things pulling at us in our mistakes that we make. But our hope is in that Christ's grace is more than sufficient for a sinner like me. This doesn't mean we don't try to, to live to a higher standard. It's because of what Christ has done on the cross that we seek to live with a, a renewed mind and a, and a new focus in a new way. 
But when we lose focus, when we're filled with fear, when we get bumped off path, our hope is not in us staying on the path or getting back on the path, but our hope is in Christ. For His grace is sufficient for all of us. Do you want to live from eternal hope or from fear? You see, this is the challenge for the faithful. Will we live through whatever comes our way and know our hope is greater than the worst of our afflictions? You see, afflictions can be mental, relational, physical. Afflictions can be a combination of all these things. Afflictions destroy hope when they become bigger than Christ, when they become greater than our hope that we have in Christ. For our affliction becomes all that we can see and know. It blinds us from our eternal hope. It blinds us from what God might be doing through it. You see, as I was talking with AJ about everything, he was telling me how his heart attack came upon him, that it was a dull pain, that he didn't have sharp pains, so he didn't think anything was going on. It first happened on Thursday during the day and then Thursday night. And then he remembered when someone told him when they had a heart attack, they were sweating profusely and had no reason for it. So when he was sweating profusely with the dull pain, he called an ambulance. You see another brother in Christ going through a hardship and an affliction of a heart attack. Saved AJ's life. Sometimes the things that we go through, the the affliction we're going through now is going to get someone else through a different time later. It's the perspective, the big picture. Sometimes the hardships that we go through protect us from getting and going other places that would have destroyed us. And as the passage says, sometimes the affliction we're going through is preparing us for our eternity in heaven. This can be a difficult thing to deal with. It can be difficult dealing with something day in and day out, especially when there's little or no hope that in this lifetime, it will be rid in our lives. But our hope is not in this vessel. Our hope is not in this world. But our hope is in a new heaven and a new earth, eternally with God. Yet we are called to bring that heaven and that hope to earth today. How do we secure eternal hope. We secure, we secure it with eternal perspective. We look to what cannot be seen, the faith and belief that Christ is our rock and our salvation, his affliction on the cross for our sins, and his defeating it when he was lifted from the grave on the third day, is our hope and our security. Because he is with the Father We will be with the Father as his brothers and sisters. That is our eternal hope and our eternal security. And when we fully believe that Christ died on the cross and was raised from the grave, and he sits at the right hand of God now, praying and interceding for us, knowing that he will come and take us to him one day, it brings hope. when we're at the bedside of a loved one. It brings hope. When we get news that one of our youth was killed in a motorcycle accident,
last Sunday after church, I discovered that one of my students from when I was in Roseburg, uh, his dad was the worship pastor at the church there. Uh, Eric was one of those kids that kept you on your toes, that you always had to be ready for. I, uh, Sunday after church, I learned that on Saturday he had passed from uh, injuries sustained in a motorcycle accident on Friday. He crushed me. It brought a flood of emotions. It brought frustration and just like, why, Lord? Perspective. You see, God had kept him alive even on one of our youth trips once when, uh, fortunately, things did not go as bad as they could have. When he was, he had found his way down into the uh, ocean on the Oregon coast during an extreme riptide and was in the water. And luckily, a couple other students found him and got him out of the water and uh, got him warmed up and heated up so no hypothermia or anything else. And I was just like, the perspective of, of that. And then this week, I read a, a post that his, his dad had put on, on Facebook about just celebrating his life and who he was and the things that he loved. About life, that it is a gift that is fleeting and it is a short period of time that we are here. But do we have eternal hope? See, that's the only hope we have. the only hope we can truly have in this life and in this world is that our hope is in Christ, in Christ alone. And through the worst of times and through the best of times, He walks with us and He has provided a way for us to be with Him and the Father where there is no more pain, no more hurt, no more sorrow, eternally in heaven. And that hope helps us deal with the hurt in the pain, in the sorrow, in the here and now. And knowing that one day it will be separated from us completely. You see, eternal life and our eternal hope drive us to speak. Hope drives us to speak. We believe and so we speak because we know the one who raised Christ Jesus will also raise us with Jesus. In Mark 3, 20 through 35, this sums up belief, salvation, our testimony, and the calling to the faithful. Then he went home, and, and the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul. And by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called to them, he called them to him, and spoke to them in parable. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. So what they were saying was the spirit that was working in Christ was an unclean spirit that was the Holy Spirit. And what Jesus is saying is they were blasphemy, blasphemy, blaspheming 
the Holy Spirit by saying it was an evil spirit. So that's one of those interesting passages that can be really hard to understand what it means. It means this. When God is working, if you can't believe that it is God who is working through His Spirit, and you want to say it's something else, that is blasphemy to the Spirit. Then his mother and his brother came, and st standing outside, they said to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brother and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Whoever does the will of God is the brother and sister and mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Our hope is truly in the Lord God, who sent his son to die and be raised and raise him on the third day through the power of the Holy Spirit. May this hope drive us to speak, live, and love as we go through life, as we deal with life, as we deal with hardships, as we deal with celebrations and praise. May our hope be in the Lord. May we Live in love as those who have eternal security, knowing that the battle has been won and the victory is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. My prayer is that each and every one of us here today, hearing this today, will have eternal hope and because of that, they'll be filled with strength, grace, and salvation, and forgiveness, not only for themselves, but for those around them, in the world around them, each and every day. Will you join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise for this day. Lord, we give you praise that our hope is in you. That when we have to deal with the, the unexplainable, the, the hard and the frustrating things in life, that we can look to you, not to things that are seen, but to the unseen. That we can look to your Son on the cross, defeating death, so we can celebrate that he is risen, and that we will rise with him and be with you, Father, in eternity forever. In Jesus' holy name, amen.